today we're going to do a little activity um, kind of centered around um, learning about the solar system. You could do this with probably as early as second grade and go more advanced, maybe up to fifth grade or so. Um, we're going to go over how to make the background of the solar system. So, you, so we're going to use crayons, um, which will be our wax resist. I have them arranged by color because I like that. We're going to use uh, watercolor, specifically just the black paint, black watercolor paint. You need a cup of water, a brush, and you need a cute sidekick to help you out. So, right now I have Miss Shalane, and she's going to help me out, mostly by getting in the way. Okay. So you can start out deciding what planets you want to be in your picture of the solar system. I like the way that uh, Saturn looks with all its rings, so I'm going to start out with Saturn. So, you might want to start out um, with a light colored, colored pencil, with a light colored crayon. Right now I have yellow. And you're going to want to draw somewhere on your page, I'm choosing right here in the corner. Then I want to draw one of the planets you choose really big. So Saturn is the one I'm going to choose to draw really big because it's going to be the one closest to me. Okay? So I drew a circle first. I know it's hard to see because it's in yellow. But I drew a circle first. It's going to be the start of my planet. Once we have that outlined and you have a good circle drawn with your light colored crayon, you might switch to a darker color to start on the shadows. Okay? So we're going to be learning a little bit about shading here and how to mix colors while shading. So, I'm going to start out with one side of it a little bit darker, like this. Okay, so right now I'm using gray color, I'm using gray color to make my dark shadow, okay? So shadow is what we're learning about today. So on a round ball, there's both a light side, which this is going to be the light side, and then a dark side. Okay, the big thing we want to concentrate on is I'm not drawing a big black outline on my planet. No, I'm going to let the shadows tell me where my planet begins and ends, okay? So that might be um, something new for elementary school kids of um, how they're not going to outline the whole planet in black first, that they're going to try to make the shadows, uh, make the shadows tell where the planet begins and ends. Okay, so I have my first layer of the dark colors, because I like to start kind of with the dark colors first in the planet. So when I look at pictures of, of Saturn, I see it mostly kind of yellowish green colors is what they, is what scientists depict Saturn as a lot of times. So I'm going to get out some yellow colors some gold colors and some greens. Okay, so now we got our main sphere. It's a new word, maybe for elementary school kids, a sphere. Saturn has rings, right? So we're going to need to draw the rings. I probably want to draw my rings darker so you can see them. Layering in perspective of how you can't see the other side of the ring on Saturn. You can only see what is on the front of the planet. Okay, and try to make your ring 
um, look like it's a sphere. Look like it's going around a circle, not just straight across your planet. You see how mine has an arch going with it to make your planet look round. Okay, so now that I've worked on Saturn, um, you see I put the light over here, so that means that the sun has to be over here somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the sun because it's a pretty big object. Now this is an opportunity to where you can talk about what the sun is, um, how the sun is actually a star, it's not a planet. Um, it's a big ball of gas and fire. And the older kids might already know that, but some of the younger kids, you'll, you'll have to talk to them about that. They're still learning about things like that. It's a great way to integrate science into your art room. You can draw little flames, little eruptions coming off of your sun if you want to. You can talk about, maybe with the older kids, they would understand. Um, how that happens on the sun. Okay, so I have my sun right here. It's giving light to Saturn. Okay, so we have to think about if we're out here close to Saturn, what other planet we might see. So I think we might see Jupiter. Um, and Jupiter would be closer to the sun, so I think it would be about right here. So this is also a great way to talk about um, things that are close to you and things that are far away. Um, so we're going to draw sad for me. We're going to draw Saturn kind of small compared to how we drew. I mean, excuse me. We're going to draw Jupiter kind of small compared to how we draw drew Saturn. So over here would be Jupiter. And when I see pictures of Jupiter, I always see this big orange dot on it. Lots of orange colors, I see. And again, we're going to try to do our shadowing, our good shadowing. Okay. So we have a little Jupiter over there. And at this point, you can talk to the kids about other things they might see in space. Um, so we could draw, um, they might say something like stars. Um, some of the older kids might know about comets and meteors. Um, for some of the younger kids, you might have to show them pictures of that because um, they might not have gotten to that yet in the regular classrooms. So um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a comet so you can explain what a comet is. Um, comets and meteors are kind of like big balls of ice and rock that catch on fire when they're flying through the atmospheres of different planets. So I think kids would have a fun time drawing that. <laughs> you can draw little flames coming out of them. Okay, and with the stars, um, you can tell them about how you can take your white crayon, and you can't see it right now, but if you put some white dots all over your paper, once we do the next step, you'll be able to see those white dots wherever you put them. So you can talk about what stars are, they're the same as the sun, you know, big balls of gas and fire. Um, you can talk about how the stars are actually really far away, you know, really, really far away. Be cool if you could get a chart of the solar system and put it up in your, in your room for whenever you're doing this project. So they have a reference to go up of, or you could pull up a picture off the internet so they could see what it looks like. Anyway, so this is our... What I'm going to do right now, um, so we have the planets that I want to include that I think I would see, and we have our comet, and then we also have some white stars that I can't see right now. So for this next step,
step, um, you're going to take a watercolor brush or any kind of soft bristle brush you have in your classroom, um, some water, and some black watercolor. You're going to get some on your brush. The kids are going to be excited. And sweep it on. And try to make your watercolor, your painting as even as possible. And you can talk about at this point how um, the crayon is actually made out of wax. So, and the wax stops the color, the watercolor, from getting on that part of the paper where the wax is. So that's why you still see your crayons when you, your crayon coloring when you cover it with watercolor. I know the paper is a little bit bent right now because that's what watercolor paper does if you don't stretch it out first. I just didn't take the time to stretch it out. So you have your space scene. Let me see. And from here you could do a lot of different things with it. You could keep it like this and just have a just have a quick lesson about the planets and um, how your solar system works or what a cool idea I think would be to do a different piece of paper and um, just a regular sheet of drawing paper and you have the kids uh, design their own spaceships on them. Now what I would do is get them a long piece of paper so to encourage them to for them to fill out the whole fill up the whole sheet of paper with their spaceship, get a long piece of paper, talk about what they think spaceships look like um, have them design it. Um, if they want to put patterns on it or put people in it or aliens in it, they can. Um, have them color it and cut out that spaceship and then paste their spaceship onto their space scene. So therefore, they not only got to learn about space, they also got to learn about how patterns and any other thing you want to incorporate into the lesson. Thank you for watching our video. We had lots of fun. Or at least I did. Shalane really didn't do anything.